Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback review of the BlackBerry Curve 9330. This phone originally came out on Verizon Wireless and it sold for around $100 uh, with a two-year service agreement. And today it remains a budget option if you want a messaging-centric smartphone. And I would still say it's decent value if you can find it for under 20 bucks, especially if you rely on a QWERTY keyboard and you're still invested into a BlackBerry's ecosystem as far as messaging, checking out your emails, and if you want security, uh, perhaps for business oriented stuff as opposed to having the most uh, entertainment and, and uh apps as well as games that can be run on the platform. So let's take a quick look at the hardware of 9330 first. It's a pretty beautiful device. It is made entirely out of plastic, so you don't get too much high-end materials like aluminum or magnesium alloys, but it does incorporate some chrome accents that makes it look very reflective, shiny, and elegant. You have access to this very nice split keyboard. It's domed, it's textured, it's backlit, and of course BlackBerry really knows how to make excellent keyboards, and this is no exception. Typing on this is, an, is a joy, and especially for longer email having that physical um, experience does help you improve accuracy. And so of course there's also software on board that automatically corrects your text in case uh, any errors pop up. The very top here features a pretty typical LCD panel, it's not IPS, and you can see that viewing angles are pretty good, though of course not nearly as rich or pixel dense as modern displays. Still it's serviceable for the general tasks that you'll be using this for. There's an optical trackpad that is pretty sensitive and easy to use as a mouse for navigating around since there isn't a touchscreen display, and there's also a multifunction key that toggles between your menus, a back key, and talk and end keys that dubs as a power key. The very top features access to a proximity light sensor along with a earpiece but no front-facing camera. So if you're getting this phone today as a video chatting product um, as part of BlackBerry's ecosystem, just note that the 9330 did not have a camera, so no Skype or video chatting for you. On the side here, there's access to a 3.5mm headphone jack, a mi mi micro USB port for charging, it takes about two hours to completely charge and afterwards I got roughly three days of use before I needed to recharge it again just because it's not super power intensive and I wasn't doing everything that I wanted to on this device. So it does work quite well as far as standby mode. There's also a programmable multifunction key and on the other edge there's a second programmable key for launching shortcuts along with a volume rocker that feels a little bit stiff for my liking. Finally the top features dedicated media controls which is extremely useful so if you just need a quick media player to play back mp3s or videos, this is still a decent option for that, and it works pretty well with these access controls just on the top. Um, the center key here can also be tapped on to lock the phone, so I can tap for a few seconds to pop it into this lock mode so that nothing happens when I try to tap on any of the other keys. Finally, the back features a 3.1 megapixel autofocus enabled camera that produces better shots than the resolution which would suggest. Still, there's no self-portrait mirror and there isn't a, pro a LED flash, so it's not going to be you know, a photographer's dream, but it does work for those emergency shots. There is a nice textured plastic material on the back that is made out of this hard plastic um, which is juxtaposed with the soft touch rubbers on the sides that makes it fairly easy to grip, and overall it's a lightweight but a nicely put together device that feels uh, pretty good despite having you know aging hardware. Behind the cover here we have access to the battery which is user replaceable along with a uh, micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in memory for media and other apps. Otherwise we have access to a CDMA variant of the phone which means that if you are traveling abroad this is not one of those devices that you'll want to get because you can't just pop in a SIM card and expect it to go uh, into a local region for, for roaming or something like that. Um, otherwise we would take a quick look at the main interface here, very classic BlackBerry and back in the day. You can see you have access to things like your time and date. I can tap on this to bring down the drag down notification drawer for things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, setting up alarms, stuff like that. Finally, there is some notification screens. Um, over here we have a universal search screen, so if I want to tap on something like Office, that's going to bring up any corresponding apps as well as allow me to search the BlackBerry app world for new apps I may want to download or search the web in general. Let's exit out of that. Finally, down here we have a few different tabs that you can scroll through to access quick menus. There's a peak function where you can see your commonly used apps in the favorites, frequent, all your applications like the web browser, email, calendar, calling, favorites, and then your media content like music, ringtones, podcasts, stuff like that. And um, if you want to look at your full drawer, you just have to tap on uh, kind of the menu key here and then 
open tray and that pops open everything that you would want to see at one time to give you an extended list of all your applications. So it's pretty easy to use. Um, it takes a few seconds to get used to, but uh, it's not something that's super complex. So let's take a quick look at some of the other features on here. It doesn't have too much bloatware, which is nice. There's access to the typical BlackBerry messages. You'll be able to read longer messages without any problems and scroll. There is kinetic scrolling. I can select on hyperlinks and embedded kind of phone numbers here. Just tap on it once to do a quick text or copy it, add to contacts, or even switch to calling. So it's pretty smart and intelligent in how it processes your text. Again, it does work very well for corporate users since this, these are the main things like productivity that you would want as a business user. Um, otherwise, if we do a quick, let's try tapping on a composing an email, for instance, and we tap on um, you know, maybe let's enter a password. We can really tell that the keyboard here is great. So this is a test and you can see that it is automatic in the sense that it will adjust depending on what screen you're in. If you're in the email, the icons for the at and uh, other symbols will be popped on automatically. So it is intelligent and that works pretty well. So you can definitely compose emails pretty quickly. Otherwise, there's access to the BlackBerry Messenger for a consolidated view of all your messages, emails, social media. There's a clock, which is very nicely made and elegant to match the contrast on the display. And the camera, which as aforementioned, produces some decent shots, actually. You can take an image pretty quickly. There's a few things that you can toggle through, such as geotagging, and it takes an image again very quickly. I can delete this image if I want to and change the autofocus settings. I can show you guys if you sample images that I took just by tapping on the bottom key over here. And you can see I can zoom in and out of my images pretty easily. And again, the color and saturation are all very accurate despite lacking too much details if you zoom all the way in just because the resolution of the sensor is pretty low, but the, the actual colors and everything else are fairly accurate looking. Again, there's a BlackBerry App World, which is not nearly as uh, cohesive or um, expensive as the Play Store or the iOS App Store. So that's something to point out. If you want to download a ton of apps, Blackberries in general aren't going to be the best unless they run on Android. In terms of games, there are a few pre-installed games on here. So there's a uh, trial versions of um, a what looks like a Texas Hold'em game, and there's also a Kondike trial version. Finally, there are full versions of Sudoku, there is also Word Mole, and also Brick Breaker. So these are classic games on a lot of BlackBerry devices that works pretty well. It's loaded on most of your phones. You have access to this trackpad that you can use to navigate the bar at the bottom, and then of course play around with some of these games. Not super graphically intensive, but they are still pretty fun, and you can definitely use it to waste a bit of time if you are traveling and you want to you know, play something to keep your mind off of the, the traveling itself. So let's try to exit out of this and go into one of the other games. Let's try Word Mole. So what you have to do here is essentially try and form words uh, such as, let's say, better, B-E-T, T, E, and we can fit an R. And when you're satisfied, you just tap on the enter key on the side there that erases the words that you've put on there. So let's try something else, such as um, kids, I, D, S, and then OK, and that erases that. So pretty fun game as well if you're into kind of word puzzles uh, to try out. In terms of the all applications drawer, that gives you a few more options, such as a task manager, and there's also a calculator, word to go, short slideshow to go, Excel or sheets to go can also be found here, password keeper. So if we look exclusively at the slideshow to go, that again is a testament to the productivity functions of a BlackBerry. And we've now kind of loaded up a new slideshow that's untitled at the moment. Again, you can see that it's trying to think a little bit. So the processor is definitely aging, no longer lightning fast. Um, as I kind of remembered, Blackberries to be fairly snappy back in the day, but you know, this is definitely a bit, uh, bit slower. So let's try to replace this maybe by first slide. I'm gonna try and title it, uh, let's say this is a review. Second bullet slide, let's say bullet, and I can extract this bullet 
test, something like that. And if I'm done with this, I can also add notes, switch to another application for multitasking, and do a few other spacing tasks if I, if I want to. And of course, add more bullet points as I see fit. So let's say that I'm done with this. I can take a look at what it looks like on an actual slide. It doesn't give you the ability to change the wallpaper and more complex things, but for basic things, it does work. You can save these slideshows and of course view it back on a larger display or of course pop it into your computer for further editing at another time. So it works pretty well. And of course, um, you know all these tie in into that business oriented functionality of Blackberries back when they were still very popular on the market. So here we've loaded up a YouTube video. You can see that um, it actually loads up reasonably quickly for a longer video, but the resolution is definitely not close to HD, and it's using almost a proprietary client, so it's not uh, viewed directly through the browser, just to optimize and make things faster to load. Um, it does, again, play back pretty well for a low power device that is obviously you know, not near, nearly close to the processing power that we have in modern day smartphones like Android devices and even modern Blackberries. But I can see that the speaker here is actually quite loud. It's a little bit tinny, it's a little bit sharp, but um, it uh, does produce quite a bit of volume, so you can definitely hear it and fills up spaces pretty well. I can tap to pause the music. I can also skip and try to pan ahead in addition to, of course, to stop it. So pretty easy to use as far as viewing back a few videos here and there. Um, not the most powerful uh, media experience in the world. That's just because Blackberries back in the day were much more oriented for corporate as well as uh, productivity rather than for web browsing per se. But you can see the optical trackpad does work pretty well as far as, far as scrolling up and down for longer lists are concerned. And most images and websites, including the New York Times, will still be loaded up without too many problems. Although it's definitely slower than modern day phones and I could definitely detect some sluggishness. Maybe I was just uh, a bit spoiled or kind of used to modern day phones in terms of their processing speed. So going back to this, it felt a little bit slow sometimes just navigating around even general uh, interface tasks, but uh, definitely still usable. And uh, for, again, most sites, you can see that it loads up without any problems. So that's been a look back and a throwback review of the BlackBerry Curve 9330. This was a fairly common uh, BlackBerry because it was decently priced, it worked well, it was attractive, um, and at the same time, again, it was very business oriented. Um, in 2017, it still works as a messaging phone. I would say if you really do need a great keyboard, it's still a good option if you are on a very tight budget, or if you wanna give it to a kid, use it as a backup media player, those things, it all can handle quite well, even for playing back YouTube videos, albeit without HD resolution. Um, at the end of the day though, it's not nearly as powerful as even budget Android phones that are new today, so just keep that in mind, and um, if you have a specific use, maybe just for security, for messaging, just for emails, then it still does work. You can check out more information about the Curve 9330 in our throwback article, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS.